Hi, this is Dr. Brett Carroll. I'm the director of sexual vascular medicine and part of the BIDMC Aortic Center. Uh, we wanted to take an opportunity to uh, walk through some of the exciting updates from the 2022 thoracic aortic aneurysm guidelines, really focusing primarily on uh, ascending aortic disease, though um, the document is uh, very uh, comprehensive and walks through descending and abdominal aortic aneurysm disease as well. Uh, it came out at the um, end of 2022, so still just a, a few months old, and um, I think it really hones down an opportunity to be a little bit more precise in terms of management of ascending aortic disease. So we're going to walk through a few of the guidelines here. One uh, important aspect of the guideline updates was really a focus on multidisciplinary teams uh, going to centers that have multiple experts, both medical and surgical, that deal with a variety of different parts of the aorta and have seen um, you know, the full gamut of aortic disease. Uh, and they recommend going to high volume centers uh, when an aortic surgery is indicated. They also focused on the importance of shared decision-making, uh, making sure the patient is well-informed and understanding both the risks and benefits of undergoing surgery, because often the most appropriate uh, approach is just uh, continued management rather than um, then jumping to surgery, management being medical management, uh, follow up with a blood pressure and close monitoring with surveillance imaging. Uh, and again, really trying to personalize uh, the individual uh, in front of the, the physician and, and making it unique uh, to the patient, not just uh, following general guidelines. There was also an increased emphasis on the role of genetic testing. The prior guidelines uh, from the U.S. had been over a decade old where genetic testing was really still in its infancy, you can see there's an increasing number of identifiable uh, genes that are associated with aortic disease, and this can help guide the appropriate management and timing of surgery for patients. In terms of who you would consider doing genetic testing on, these are identifiable risk factors for a familial process, certainly if anyone has syndromic features, which we've touched on on past videos, uh, for uh, Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz or Ehlers-Danlos, Anyone, which is a pretty broad recommendation, anyone with a thoracic aneurysm aged under 60, uh, on these guidelines, they recommend uh, determining the difference between aortic dilation and aortic aneurysm, being those with a, an aorta greater than 4.0 to 4.4 centimeters being considered dilation and greater than 4.5 uh, or equal to 4.5 centimeters being an aneurysm. But still, anyone uh, at less than 60, you would consider doing genetic testing. Anyone with a family history, uh, including those with uh, even a family history of a peripheral or intracranial aneurysm, or anyone with a family history of unexplained sudden death at a young age. Yeah. Uh, they have a nice flow chart here in terms of how to work through who you would do genetic testing for and how you would uh, approach um, a potential positive result and the importance of cascade screening as well. There has been a push, which we've seen this guidelines uh, over the last you know, five to 10 years of maybe we should be operating on these patients sooner. Surgery is getting safer. Uh, we know that the majority of dissections occur in patients that are below the previously recommended guideline uh, recommendation for repair. So maybe we should be pushing more what they call a leftward shift, being intervening a little bit earlier on these patients. So uh, we could see how the guidelines had incorporated some of this push in the literature over the last several years. So focusing first on non-syndromic heritable thoracic aortic disease. The, I will say the guidelines nicely walk through um, thresholds for Marfans, Lois Dietz, others Danlos, not really going to be a focus here of our uh, quick discussion, but which is really a growing bucket, the non-syndromic heritable processes. They recommend uh, repair uh, five centimeters or less for most patients with a heritable process, but they also define those that would be at higher risk in this uh, context. So those with a family history of a known dissection or rupture of an aorta that was less than five centimeters, certainly you don't want to be waiting until five centimeters if an individual has a known sibling that had dissection at, for example, 4.7 centimeters. You want to be intervening earlier than that, that prior threshold, maybe even considering closer to 4.5 centimeters. In those with a family history of sudden death at less than 50 years old, you would consider you know, repairing it a little bit earlier, or those that have had rapid growth defined as greater than half a centimeter in a year or greater than 0.3 centimeters over consecutive years. As I mentioned, really trying to hone down on a personalized approach for patients. Uh, this was a nice 
um, graphic that was formed in um, response to the guidelines, going through some of the specific genetic defects. And if you had an abnormality, what the recommendation would be uh, based on that finding. And again, you would have to tailor this to the individual's personal and family history as well. For sporadic aneurysms, um, or what some would maybe consider a degenerative aneurysm, these are with uh, patients without a clear family history, no genetic abnormalities. Um, maybe your older patients with risk factors such as hypertension. Uh, these patients are still for most being recommended at five and a half centimeters. Though in these guidelines, they do recommend considering closer to 5.0 centimeters in those that are lower risk for surgery and having surgery uh, in the context of a multidisciplinary team at a high volume surgical center. They also uh, put a little bit of emphasis on indexing the size. So if you have a uh, patient that is an extreme size, either one uh, patient that is very tall or very short, you would consider uh, indexing it with a threshold of cross-sectional aortic area to height ratio being a threshold greater than or equal to 10 centimeters squared over meter, those patients you would consider maybe doing surgery a little bit earlier, the class 2A recommendation. For those with a bicuspid valve, we've seen this evolve over the last decade. And really, in, to summarize briefly, though uh, there are some nuances to bicuspid valve compared to a tricuspid valve, but overall, really treating these, these patients similarly to a sporadic uh, aneurysm in the context of a tricuspid valve, meaning we don't really differentiate the threshold significantly between those with a bicuspid valve versus a tricuspid valve. Those that are low risk for surgery at a high volume center, you could consider closer to 5.0 centimeters, regardless of valve morphology. Similarly, you can also be comfortable waiting till five and a half centimeters for most of these patients that are maybe a little bit higher risk for surgery and don't have high risk features such as family history of aortic dissection, rapid growth, aortic coarctation, or you may consider doing it a little bit earlier if they have a, a root phenotype. Also put a little bit of an emphasis, which had been lacking in prior uh, guidelines in terms of what to do after repair. So patients um, that have had an aortic, uh, sending aortic aneurysm repair should undergo testing within the first year postoperatively to get a baseline. And then every five years thereafter, but you would tailor that again to the individual. So if you had someone that you were worried about uh, additional aneurysm formation, particularly maybe someone with Marfans, you would be much more aggressive in terms of the follow-up imaging than someone maybe with a sporadic aneurysm and otherwise normal aorta. You could probably space that out to every five years. Uh, just a quick note, uh, a whole different talk in itself, but there is a, a special uh, approach to patients that are pregnant or considering pregnancy with aortic disease really should be uh, handled at a high volume center with a lot of experience uh, in these diseases and multidisciplinary team approach. So just end with uh, our BIDMC aortic center, really focused on multidisciplinary care. We have wonderful surgeons, uh, very thoughtful genetics group, and really try to make sure we're making the best decision and individualized for the personalized, uh, personalized care for the patient. And uh, happy to work with um, a variety of different providers to make sure we're making the best decisions for the patients. Thanks for your time.